What is going on guys? My name is Micah and this is going to be the 11th tutorial in the 2D iPhone game programming series. Um, in this tutorial we are going to cover the last bit of the world generator so that when we actually generate the world it's not going to stop after these three initial generations and um, we're gonna have a continuous world that will keep going. So um, to do that we're going to go to the did simulate physics method of our mycene implementation file and we're going to create a couple methods. So they're going to be the handle a generation method along with the handle cleanup method. So what the handle generation method is going to do is it's going to, um, basically it's gonna call the generate method of the ML world generator class every single time your hero jumps over one of those blocks so that it's going to um, continuously be creating these uh, ground and obstacle nodes as you go along. So handle generation. Um, and we're also just gonna create the basic outline for the handle cleanup method. So we're gonna be using a new method that every single node has called the enumerate child nodes with name function. And what this does is it grabs all the child nodes with that specific name from our scene because we called it from self. And it goes through all of them and it allow, allows you to do an operation on every single one of them. So to actually use this method, we need to have named our ground and obstacle nodes, which we have not done yet. So we're gonna go into the ML world, genera M ML world generator implementation file, go down to the ground node and set the ground.name equal to ground and the obstacle.name equal to obstacle. So now that we have those two named, we can actually access them. And here we want the obstacle, and then hit tab, then press enter. Now, what this SK node node uh, thing you see here is, when I first saw this, it kind of freaked me out because it looked, um, it looked complicated, but it's actually really, really simple. This node, is um what it, the, so the enumerate child nodes with name method goes through every single no, child node with the name obstacle. Um, this node variable is just the way that you access each of these nodes as it goes through. Um, the stop boolean you don't actually have to really worry about because you only call that if you want to stop the enumeration. Um, if you find like that a certain uh, condition is true with one of the nodes. So I'm going to make an if statement here. So I'm gonna say if node.position.x. So remember that this node right here is just one of the obstacles that it is enumerating through, that it is going through. So node if node.position.x is less than um, the hero.position.x, so this means that um, the hero has actually passed by one of those nodes. You are going to set that node's name equal to obstacle canceled because the reason you do this is um, you wanna make sure that when you call the handle generation method again, it's not gonna go back through this node because it doesn't actually have to check it because we already know that it's past the hero and it's, al it's already been a can it's already been accounted for. So we're gonna do that, and then we're also going to then call the generator generate method. So um, every single time that you jump over one of these blocks, the generate method is called. And so we can try this out. We're going to run this in the simulator. And this should give us a continuous world. So you see that we can jump over this block, jump over this block, jump over this block, and it doesn't look like we're getting this um, continuous world. So let's see, let's see what's going on there. Okay guys, I um, actually just found out the problem. What we're doing is we're not enumerating, uh, we're not calling this enumerate child nodes with name method in the correct node. We're, right now we're calling it within the scene. We wanna call it within the world because um, that is where these obstacles have been added to. So now if we run this, we can take out these um, NS log messages. Now if we run this, the um, generator should be generating a complete world. So 
click to start, and then you see one, two, three, four, and it's just gonna keep going because the generator is now continuously generating this world here. So awesome, now that we have that figured out, um, I'm going to do one more thing. This is going to be optional, so if you just wanna move on to the next video, you're more than welcome to. Um, I just wanna make these obstacles turn different colors because I think that makes it more interesting. And um, it's actually pretty simple to do. So we're gonna go into the ML World Generator class. We're gonna create a new method called, um, it's gonna return a UI color, get random color. So this is gonna just cover the, um, the rand, arc for random function, which is really, really useful um, for level generation and just a lot of things related to games. So it's a good thing to know. So let's say we're gonna to wanna to have um, maybe six different colors that we are going, are going to actually choose from. So we're gonna do int rand equals arc for random. I'm gonna do over six. So what this arc for random function does is it gets, um, it gets a really high numbered random integer value. And then to actually bring it down to, um, bring it down to something that we can actually manage, we use uh, this modular function right here. And if you've programmed before, you should know what this does. All it does is it divides that big number by six and then takes the remainder and sets that to the random value. So now that we have a random number between zero and five, we're gonna do switch, um, switch rand. This is just a, uh, Oh, here I, I kind of like having the template fill everything in. Switch rand constant zero. The switch statement will just take this random number we have and we can do k zero through five and we can put in all the stuff that we want to happen um, within uh, this space after each colon. So we're gonna do UI color, color. This is going to be the color that we're going to set. So if it's zero, let's say color is gonna equal UI color red color. Uh, for case one, we want make that a colon color equals UI color, orange color, break. Be sure you put that break statement in there. Case two, color equals UI color, let's say um, yellow color. Can you guys see the pattern that I'm going on here? Um, Roy G. Biv, you guys remember chemistry? Um, not chemistry, uh, I learned it in chemistry actually but it's actually physics, optics, color equals, UI color, green color, and you guys can add whatever colors you want. Um, I'll probably skip ahead in this video just because this is really tedious. UI color, uh, purple color, and break, and then case five, let's just say color equals UI color, blue color. So at the end there I kind of ran out of, um, I didn't actually do follow the Roy G. Biv thing, but um, that just gets six different colors and we'll return this UI color. All you have to do now is um, in this SK Sprite node obstacle when we initialize this, we're just going to call the self get random color method. Now if we, um, if we run this and don't have an error, oh that's right I need to you need to return the color. That's pretty important. Now if we run it, um, you will see that the obstacles are now pretty much all different colors and um, it just gets a random color and that's kind of fun, I guess. So uh, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.